Good morning students, uh, today is lecture 33 under module 11 and uh, in today's lecture we will discuss about one of the uh, interesting uh, membrane separation process that is called membrane distillation. Uh, we will try to learn what is membrane distillation, its principles, the mechanism, uh, what are the different uh, process parameters that affect its uh, performance. Then we will see about uh, various types of membranes that are being used for uh, membrane distillation, their properties and uh, two or three different applications. Now, you know it is a uh, membrane distillation is a thermally driven uh, membrane process. So, most membrane transport processes are uh, usually isothermal with either concentration pressure or electrical potential difference as the driving force. That is what we have been discussing since our lecture started, uh, this course start. When a membrane separates two phases held at different temperatures, right, heat will flow from the high temperature side to the low temperature side. Now, this transport of heat is expressed by simple phenomenological equation that is nothing but Fourier's law. Now, uh, Fourier's law says that heat flow is related to the corresponding driving force and the temperature difference. So, here lambda is the uh, thermal conductivity or heat conductivity. Now, if you integrate this equation, we will get uh, flux equals to lambda by L T naught minus T L. So, L being the thickness of the membrane. In addition to heat flow, a mass flow also occurs, the process called thermosmosis or thermodiffusion. Uh, no phase transitions occurs in this uh, uh, processes. Now, another important applications of this membrane separation process is membrane distillation. So, what happens in membrane distillation is, here a porous membrane separates two liquids uh, which do not wet it. So, if the liquids differ in temperature, the resulting vapor pressure difference causes vapor molecules to permeate from high temperature to low temperature. That means, uh, high vapor pressure side to the lower vapor pressure side as uh, being seen in this particular um, schematics you can see here. So, the feed side temperature is T naught and uh, permeate side is T 1. So, here we can write T naught is greater than equals to T 1. So, in this membrane distillation actually the two liquids or solutions at different temperatures are separated by a porous membrane. Uh, the liquids or solution must not wet the membrane otherwise the pores will be filled immediately as a result of capillary forces. It will affect the separation. So, you need then uh, pressure uh, operated uh, membrane separation process or uh, without that it cannot be achieved. So, um, this also tells us that non wettable porous hydrophobic membranes must be used in the case of aqueous solutions when I am dealing with aqueous solutions separations. Now, when the phases contain pure water there is no temperature difference, the system is in equilibrium and no transport occurs. If the temperature of one of the two phases is higher than that of the other, a temperature difference exists across the membrane resulting in a vapor pressure difference. Now, that vapor pressure is eventually the difference in vapor pressure is eventually uh, that is the driving force basically. So, vapor molecules will transport through the pores of the membrane from high vapor pressure to the low vapor pressure side. So, usually the transport occurs in uh, a sequence of three steps. Another thing we have to understand here the membrane is just separating the two phases. The membrane itself is not doing the separation. Okay, so, you can say that it is the barrier between two phases and due to the uh, this one um, temperature difference between the two uh, phases which is being separated uh, physically by the membrane itself and uh, the separation is occurring. So, transport occurs in a sequence of three steps, first is evaporation on the high temperature side then transport of vapor molecules through the pores of the hydrophobic porous membrane, then third is condensation on the temperature side. As it comes to the lower temperature side, then condensation occurs. So, this is the schematic where uh, T 1 is greater than T 2. So, of course, this is T 1 here and this is T 2 here. So, membrane distillation is one of the process in which the membrane is not directly involved in the separation. This is what I, ju I was just telling you. The only function of the membrane is to act as a barrier between the two phases. So, selectivity is completely determined by the vapor liquid equilibrium, this is very important just like your uh, distillation. Uh, this means that the component with the highest partial pressure will show the highest permeation rate. So, uh, let us take an example of ethanol water mixture where the membrane is not wetted at low ethanol concentrations, both components will be transported through the membrane that means both ethanol and water will be transported through the membrane okay? uh, because uh, the membrane is not wetted at uh, uh, very low ethanol concentrations. Mm, but the permeation rate of ethanol will always be relatively higher because of uh, higher uh, uh, pressure. 
okay, or we can say higher partial pressure. So, with salt solution for another example where uh, sodium chloride is dissolved in water, only water has a vapor pressure. Okay. So, uh, water has a vapor pressure, uh, the vapor pressure of sodium chloride uh, which is present uh, um, uh, in very low amount can be neglected which means that only water will permeate through the membrane and consequently very high selectivities are obtained. So, it actually depends upon what type of uh, system you are dealing with and what is its application. Based on that, you can uh, obviously uh, design your membrane distillation and why about membrane distillation? All membrane separation process I have been uh, telling you since the course has started that we can always tailor make a membrane okay, to suit a particular applications. So, as uh, in the case of microfiltration, ultrafiltration, reverse osmosis, nanofiltration, anything uh, and obviously uh, membrane distillation also. So, the transport of volatile components through the membrane can be described by phenomenological equations in which the flux is proportional to the driving force that is the temperature difference across the membrane. The temperature difference results in a vapor pressure difference that is temperature and vapor pressure related to according to the Antoine equation. So, this we have discussed earlier. So, I am not repeating the equations again. So, the flux may be described by phenomenological equation J equals to B delta P i. Here flux is related to two parameters. The first one is the B which is the membrane based parameter, the second is delta P which is a system based parameters, the pressure uh, difference of the um, driving force. So, the proportionality factor B is determined by the membrane parameter such as material, what is the membrane material, um, whether it is hydrophobic, uh, hydrophilic, the structure of the pore, porosity as well as the thickness of the membrane. As usual for other membrane separation, this also holds good for membrane distillation, the thickness of the membrane should be as thin as possible. The main structural parameters are the porosity which must be as high as possible and the membrane thickness. Uh, the uh, pore size distribution must be narrow particularly on the larger pore side because the largest pores will be wetter first. Um, this uh, wetting of pores and all hydrophobic, hydrophilic we have discussed when we are discussing uh, this one bubble point um, uh, method to characterize microfiltration membranes. I hope you will recall those. So, in contrast the system based parameter delta P is mainly determined by the temperature difference that is delta T. So, other parameters of interest are the hydrodynamic conditions that is flow velocity even the module design also because they determine the effect of the temperature polarization and hence influence the diving force. So, when we talk about module design it is basically the length and width of the module and how many if you are using hollow fiber system. So, all these things also plays an important role. So, there are four different types of uh, membrane distillation configuration. The first one is called direct contact membrane distillation DCMD. In this system, uh, the feed phase is in direct contact with one upstream side of the membrane, then vacuum membrane distillation, then air gap membrane distillation and sweep gas membrane distillation. So, there are basically four uh, designs or four ways in which we can uh, design our uh, membrane distillation unit depending upon of course, the application and the requirement. So, let us see the schematic diagrams. Okay. See the first one the DCMD the direct contact membrane distillation here the feed solution is in contact directly with the contact with the membrane here okay. and you are passing a, a distillate here and you are getting uh, your uh, permeate uh, whatever it is here. So, whatever is getting separated will be written on the surface of the membrane okay, uh, due to the large size of the molecules or smaller particles will obviously pass through right. The uh, second is we can call it VMD. So, it is vacuum membrane distillation. So, here again you see it is something like pervaporation you know uh, in which pervaporation membrane system if you uh, try to recall the permeate site we used to uh, make the low vapor pressure by either using a sweep gas or using a vacuum. Okay. So, here it is uh, we are using a vacuum system okay, to maintain the low pressure pressure here. So, what are you doing is, is trying to maintain okay, as low as possible partial pressure. Okay. So, this is another way and the third one is something little different which we have never discussed is air gap membrane distillation. So, here there is a air gap between one phase of the one side of the of the membrane. Okay. So, basically you can see in this particular figure. So, the downstream side there is a air gap. Okay. Then the cooling or condenser uh, side is coming into picture actually basically. So, this is uh, the, this particular area is uh, the in which it contains air basically okay. and the last one is this is uh, sweep gas membrane distillation where again it is similar to this uh, VMD okay, where we are trying to have the low vapor pressure using a sweep gas. 
Okay. So, you just maintain the low vapor pressure here. So, uh, the rate of transport of the components those who are having higher partial pressure will eventually uh, pass through the permeate side. Okay. So, uh, you can say the faster uh, 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 with at a faster rate whose partial pressure is high on the upstream side. Right. Uh, these are the four different types of configurations. So, let us see and try to understand the different merits and demerits of these four different uh, configuration. So, if you look at the DCMD, the direct contact membrane distillation, here uh, this is one of the easiest one and the simplest configuration to make it practically. Uh, here in this case, flux is more stable than VMD if you compare with the vacuum distillation, uh, membrane distillation uh, for the feed with fouling tendency. The feeds, uh, the echo stream, uh, if we are containing some metals which are uh, uh, very uh, highly susceptible to fouling, then in this case, uh, the uh, if you use a DCMD, then the flux will be more stable than the vacuum um, system. So, uh, high gain output ratio, it may be the most appropriate configuration for the removal of the volatile components. Okay. So, apart from that the demerits are uh, flux obtained is relatively lower when vacuum configurations under identical operating conditions are being used, thermal polarization is highest among all the configurations. Flux is relatively more sensitive to feed concentration. This is also very important. This and uh, the fouling tendency, this merits, demerits, they actually are uh, two parts of the same coin. Okay. So, the permeate quality is sensitive to membrane wetting suitably mainly for the echo solutions. So, the next is vacuum uh, membrane distillation VMD. Uh, so, the merits is that uh, it obtains very high flux. It can be used for recovery of aroma compounds and related substances. The permeate quality is stable despite of some wetting, no possibility of wetting from distillate side and thermal polarization is very, very low. So, uh, it has some demerits also that higher probability of poor wetting. Uh, that's that's the, the that the reason is that since you are maintaining vacuum, right, it will try to uh, push the uh, liquid through the pores. So uh, probability of poor wetting becomes more uh, compared to other uh, systems or other configurations. Fouling will be higher again due to the vacuum system. Um, minimal selectivity of volatile components and they require vacuum pump and external condenser. So, that means uh, little more energy uh, you um, requirement is there here and little more cost also. So, air gap membrane distillation is a uh, very different kind of system in which uh, as I show you just that there is a air gap just between, uh, uh, after the membrane to the downstream side or the permeate side. So, it, uh, it maintains a very high or relatively high flux compared to other systems uh, and low thermal losses. Uh, no wetting on the permeate side. Since I am not drawing uh, forcefully the uh, this one uh, permeate and a less fouling tendency. So, demerits is that air gap provides an, an additional resistance to vapors that is always there, but see uh, depending upon what type of vapors it is, what components you are transferring uh, uh, depending on that uh, we can say whether the air gap is providing a proper resistance or not. However, there is a resistance and the, so, the uh, quantum of resistance or the magnitude of resistance may vary depending upon the uh, components. So, a difficult module design, designing and uh, difficult to model due to an involvement of too many variables and lowest gain output ratio. So, the next one is the sweep gas membrane distillation that is SGMD. So, here the thermal polarization is lower. So, um, uh, no wetting from permeate side also happens, permeate quality independent of membrane wetting and demerits are additional complexity due to extra equipment involved because anyway you have to pass sweep gas. So, you have to have a sweep gas uh, a tank in which uh, uh, the sweep gas is uh, uh, being uh, uh, okay, or we can say uh, the sweep it uh, a tank which contains the sweep gas. Then second thing is that you need a, uh, a pump to uh, pump it pump the sweep gas to the um, uh, membrane module. Uh, so, heat recovery is difficult here in this case, flux is lower compared to other systems and pretreatment of sweep gas may be needed depending upon what type of sweep gas you are using and is there any reaction that will going to happen if you are uh, once the sweep gas comes in contact with the uh, components that is getting transferred to the permeate side. 
Now, let us discuss the different types of process parameters which are affecting the membrane distillation system or efficiency we can say. So, uh, MD is based on the concept that distillation takes place across a porous membrane. The main requirement is that membrane mass must not be wetted. So, that is far most important point you can say. Um, if wetting occurs, the liquid will penetrate spontaneously into the pores of the membrane. Now, the wettability is determined by the interaction between the liquid and the polymeric material with uh, no wetting occurring at low in affinity. Information about wettability can be obtained by contact angle measurements that is a drop of liquid is placed on a non-porous uh, flat and smooth surface and the contact angle is measured. So, you just measure the uh, contact angle. Okay. Mm, so, what is the theta? Right. So, for low affinity the theta will have a greater value greater than 90 degree whereas, for high affinity the value of theta will be uh, less than 90 degree. So, in the latter case the liquid will wet the surface. So, if the material is porous uh, the liquid will penetrate and uh, into the pores when wetting occurs that is when the theta is uh, uh, less than uh, 90 degree. Uh, this can be described by the Laplace equation. So, this equation we have discussed uh, uh, during this one when we discussed about the characterization of microfiltration membranes using bubble point uh, method or apparatus. So, delta p equals to minus 2 uh, this one gamma uh, 1 by r cos theta. So, if theta is greater than 90 degree okay, 90 degree then cos theta is less than uh, 0 and delta p greater than 0 on and only if a finite pressure is applied according to the Laplace equation the liquid will penetrate into the membrane. So, the wettability depends upon another th two three th parameters the first one is pore size. Uh, second is surface tension of the liquid and third is surface energy of the membrane material or we can say the cos theta in uh, other word you can say cos theta at, uh, directly. So, the weighting pressure is inversely proportional to the membrane pore size. The pressure needed uh, to weight a porous teflon membrane with water as a function of pore size is being plotted here. You can see if you use uh, increase the pore diameter here okay, your delta p that is coming down the pressure is coming down. Okay. Uh, so, higher the pore size the lesser is the pressure that is required. So, uh, surface tension is another parameter. So, the second parameter that determines wettability is the surface tension of the liquid. So, this is related to intermolecular forces such as dispersion forces, polar forces and hydrogen bonding. So, anyway uh, 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 this also we have discussed in one of our classes. So, in hydrocarbon such as hexane let us uh, uh, understand uh, what is happening here. So, only weak dispersion forces act and consequently the surface tension is too low. So, on the other hand in cases where hydrogen bonding occurs such as in water the intermolecular forces are very strong and as a result the surface tension is high. Uh, so, when a liquid is brought into contact with a smooth polymeric surface various contact angles between the liquid and the polymer are observed depending on the affinity between the liquid and the polymer. So, this table gives you the values of surface tension of some liquids at 20 degree centigrade you can see it is water it is 72.8 and uh, 10 power of 3 newtons per meter, methanol is 22.6, ethanol is more or less same as methanol 22.8, uh, glycerol is close to that of water it is 63.4, formamide uh, is 58.2, and hexane another very important class of solvent it is 18.4. So, if the contact angle is greater than 90 degree the liquid does not wet the surface this again this we have already discussed. So, when it is smaller than 90 degree liquids wet the surface. So, when contact angle equals to 0 the liquid spreads out over the surface. So, uh, wetting is favored when the solid polymer has a high surface energy to avoid wetting the maximum pore size must be small the surface tension of the liquid should be high for example, water the surface energy of the membrane material should be low such as with polypropylene, uh, polyethylene, polytetrafluoroethylene or polyvinyl uh, uh, din fluoride PVDF. So, uh, uh, this is uh, this table again uh, summarizes surface energy of some of the polymers. So, you can see for uh, PTF it is 19.1. So, um, polytrifluoroethylene it is 23.9. So, PVDF it is 30, PVC 36.7, and so on for, for polysulfone it is 42. So, uh, all these uh, data are given in uh, membrane handbook or as, as well as you can see from other handbooks also. So, uh, let us now understand the membranes that are being used and what are the properties uh, that ideal uh, um, uh, membrane distillation membrane should have. Uh, 
So, one of the most crucial aspects of the membrane distillation is to have membranes with well controlled properties. So, the successful outcome of the process is reasonably expected to be depending upon the capability of the membrane to interface two media without dispersing one phase into another and to combine high volumetric mass transfer okay, with high resistance to liquid intrusion in the pores. So, the membranes for membrane contacted application have to be porous, hydrophobic with good thermal stability and excellent chemical resistance to feed solution. But see most of these parameters or uh, these properties are common for all other uh, membrane separation applications too. So, to uh, avoid wetting the surface energy of the polymer must be as low as possible. Now, this means that uh, very hydrophobic materials okay, such as your uh, PTFE, PVDF, uh, PE or PP must be used in combination with liquids with high surface tension such as water. So, a good hydrophobic membrane and water as the sol uh, this one uh, solvent is fine for uh, carrying out a membrane distillation uh, process. So, the selectivity is determined by the vapor liquid equilibrium, the membrane cannot be optimized further. However, the flux can be optimized and here the most important parameter is the porosity that is surface porosity and overall porosity. A higher porosity is often associated with increasing pore size, but this factor also favors wettability. So, there is a high porosity 70 to 80 percent with pore sizes in the range of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 micron is usually desirable. So, furthermore it is important that membrane should be as thin as possible. This I, this I already told you in the beginning of the class and this holds again I am telling you this holds good for all other membrane separation processes also. So, in particular the characteristic needed for membrane are as follows high liquid uh, entry pressure which is called as LEP then high permeability, low fouling problem. Uh, or low fouling uh, tendencies, high chemical stability as well as high thermal stability. So, let us uh, discuss one by one. So, high liquid entry pressure. So, uh, high liquid entry pressure is the minimum hydrostatic pressure that must be applied onto the feed solution before it overcomes the hydrophobic forces of the membrane and penetrates into the membrane pores. So, uh, we can say that the minimum pressure that it should have to overcome the hydrophobic forces of the uh, membrane. So, that um, a liquid uh, or the aqueous media can penetrate into the pores. So, LEP is a characteristic of each membrane and permits to prevent wetting of the membrane pores. High LEP may be achieved using a membrane material with a uh, hydrophobicity okay, and a small maximum pore size. So, this equation gives uh, LEP, how do you calculate LEP? So, B, uh, B uh, gamma cos theta divided by d max. So, here b is a geometric factor determined by the pore structure with a value equal to 1 for cylindrical pore and gamma l is the liquid surface tension, theta is the liquid solid contact angle. So, however, as um, d max is the uh, uh, maximum pore size. So, uh, however, uh, as the maximum pore size decreases, the mean pore size of the membrane decreases and the permeability of the membrane also becomes very low. The next one is high permeability. So, the flux will increase with an increase in the membrane pore size and porosity and with a decrease of the membrane thickness and pore tortuosity. In fact, molar flux through a pore is related to the membrane's average pore size and other characteristic parameters by this equation. So, n proportional to r alpha uh, then epsilon divided by tau into uh, delta. Now, uh, where uh, uh, epsilon is the membrane porosity, tau is the uh, membrane tortuosity, okay. the delta is the membrane thickness, r alpha is a average pore size for the not strain diffusion when alpha equals to 1 and r alpha is average square pore size for viscous flow when alpha equals to 2. Now, in other words to obtain a high permeability the surface layer that governs the membrane transport must be as thin as possible and its surface porosity as well as pore size must be as large as possible. So, as thin membrane as possible okay, and the surface porosity as well as pore size must be as large as possible. So, the next one is low fouling problem. So, fouling is one of the major problems in the application of porous membranes. Fortunately, in the gas liquid contactor applications, the contactors are less sensitive to fouling since there is no convective flow, there is no convective flow through the membrane pores. So, however, in industrial applications, gas and liquid streams with large content of suspended particles can cause plugging due to small hollow fiber diameter. In case if we are using the uh, hollow fibers then uh, uh, fouling may be a uh, problem. So, pre filtration is necessary in such cases. 
So, next is high ke chemical stability. So, the chemical stability of the membrane material has a significant effect on its long term stability. Uh, any reaction between the solvent and the membrane material could possibly affect the membrane matrix and surface structure. So, this is very important. So, uh, it should be chemically inert. So, liquid with high load of acid gases are corrosive in nature which make the membrane material less resistance to chemical attack. The next one is high thermal stability. So, under high temperatures the membrane material may not be able to resist to degradation or decomposition. Changing in the nature of membrane uh, depends on the glass transition temperature Tg for an amorphous polymer and the melting temperature for crystalline polymers. So, over these temperatures the properties of the polymers change dramatically. Uh, so, polytetrafluoroethylene PTFE has a, a much higher uh, glass transition temperature compared to polyethylene or polypropylene. So, uh, since we have been discussing and we try to and we understand that uh, the membrane uh, required for membrane distillation should be as much hydrophobic as possible. Okay. Uh, so, then uh, and we need to try to understand that how do you increase or enhance the hydrophobicity of the membranes. So, the main objective of the modification is to incorporate or enhance the hydrophobic character of the membrane surface at the membrane surface of course. The use of fluoropolymers has gained popularity for such modifications. Now, high thermal stability, mechanical strength and low surface energy are the main attractions for use of these polymers. Recently in a work uh, Zingwei, they have introduced a CF4 CF plasma surface modification on hydrophilic asymmetric uh, PS membrane. The modified membrane showed a contact angle of 120 degree and a transmembrane flux of 45 liters per meter square hour for a 4 percent sodium chloride solution at a feed inlet temperature of 63 degree centigrade. So, in another work Zhang et al used a spray of polydimethyl silcoxen which is called as PDMS and hydrophobic silicon dioxide on PVDF membrane to render hydrophobic character. So, a water contact angle of almost 156 degree centigrade was achieved for a 1.5 percent particles in the spray. The modification ensured that the operational stability of the process is stable. Uh, the um, permeate of a very high quality was achieved during long time operational run. Uh, in another work, uh, work Zhang and Wang modified the surface of polyetheramide hollow fiber membrane with fluorinated silica layer. A dramatic increase in hydrophobicity of the membrane was observed due to increased surface roughness and decreased surface energy of the membrane. So, then let us understand the uh, membrane distillation, membrane fouling. So, as you know due to different transport phenomena generally rigorous fit characteristics and use of hydrophobic membranes the nature of fouling in uh, membrane distillation is different from other low pressure membrane processes. A scale formation at the membrane surface is the most common form of fouling observed in membrane distillation process when applied to concentrated uh, salt solutions. The mass transfer parameters also affect the membrane distillation performance. The mass transfer rate across microporous hydrophobic membrane in uh, membrane distillation is driven by the temperature gradient across the membrane surfaces. Uh, the heat losses attributed to the conduction through the membrane and convection associated with the vapor transport reduce the surface temperature at the feed side and increase the corresponding temperature at the permeate side, thus inducing the thermal polarization at both sides. So, uh, the scale formation at the membrane surface has been observed in the studies and address, uh, addressing the uh, membrane distillation applied to solutions containing salts. Uh, calcium and magnesium are identified, calcium and magnesium, calcium and magnesium are identified as the main scale forming salts. Uh, the scale formation um, in membrane distillation was pointed out as one of the major responsible factors for weighting flux reduction as well as damage to the membrane structure. The formation of porous deposits uh, decreases the flux by lowering the heat transport to the membrane surface while the non-porous deposits increase the resistance to the mass transport. Uh, the effect of wetting is not only restricted to possible reduction in flux and degradation of permeate quality, but also a severe fouling inside the pores caused by the precipitated or adsorbed materials. So, uh, let us I uh, will show you how actually these are all uh, real life pictures. So, you can see these are all scanning electron microscopes images all this 1, 2, 3, 4 and this is the real picture of uh, how the scaling is uh, taking place here you can see. 
and you can see here also the microscopic image these are the scaling here this is the scale that is taken place okay and these are the materials that is forming scales okay maybe calcium and magnesium so uh, this is how actually the scale formation is happening during membrane distillation okay and inside uh, uh, channels and uh, these are all hollow fiber systems basically so uh, different types of fouling observed in the uh, membrane distillation studies so uh, the first column is feed type the second is membrane use the third is type of fouling so uh, let us understand the wastewater from heparin production okay so here you use a polypropylene capillary membrane so the type of fouling is due to wetting deposition scaling and biofouling so uh, desalination or sodium chloride solution so a curel polypropylene s6 by 2 membrane wetting and surface scaling are the uh, responsible for fouling if uh, for synthetic wastewater a pvdf flat sheet millipore membrane is being used wetting and thick layer of biofouling are the types of fouling in case of bilge water again the same acryl uh, s6 by 2 pp membrane so deposit layer formation at the surface biofouling surface and internal crystallization all these are responsible for uh, your fouling skim milk and whey solution so a polytetrafluoroethylene flat sheet membrane with even polypropylene support is being used uh, layer of deposits at the membrane surface are found uh, municipal water and flue gas condensate so it's a ptfe flat sheet membrane is being used scale formation at the membrane surface so now let us understand and uh, the different applications of membrane distillation process so uh, the applications can be classified in two types basically depending upon whether uh, uh, your desiring product you are drawing in the permeate side or the desired product is in the retained set side um, in most applications the permeate is the product of interest in applications mean membrane distillation applications which is not true for all other membrane processes so in most of the membrane distillation systems usually uh, the product of interest comes through the permeate side so the first one let us understand the production of pure water so a high quality permeate can be obtained with membrane distillation as for example when you are talking about water for semiconductor industry we need ultra pure water uh, boiler feed water for uh, power plants and desalination of sea water so the quality of permeate remains high even at high feed concentrations for all these uh, applications so you just look at this is one typical example where a porous polypropylene membrane was used where the flux and selectivity was plotted as a function of the sodium chloride solution so when you see when you increase the sodium chloride solution from 0.1 to 1 to 10 percent you see there is a decline in fl uh, flux okay so almost uh, you can say this is 7 here it is coming to let us say 4.5 percent okay so this is the magnitude of decline of flux right mm, uh, when you are uh, increasing the sodium chloride concentration from 0.1 to 10 percent whereas the selectivity okay uh, which is being plotted here 0 0.2 0 0.4 you can see this is flat here okay the selectivity is almost remains same when you uh, increase sodium chloride concentration that means selectivity is not depending upon the sodium chloride uh, concentration during membrane distillation so uh, with increasing salt concentration the flux of some decline because of a decrease in vapor pressure so on the other hand the quality of the permeate is independent of the feed concentration now uh, whereas in uh, sea water desalination reverse osmosis is strongly affected by the osmotic pressure uh, of the highly concentrated feed solutions membrane distillation can handle even higher salt concentrations without a substantial decrease in membrane performance uh, then uh, when you talk about removal of volatile organic components this is one of the um, uh, applications of membrane distillation or even you know uh, in pervaporation uh, where pervaporation is being used for removing uh, VOCs so such as chlorinated hydrocarbons or aromatics from an aqueous solution okay so these volatile contaminants are often present in very low concentrations in surface water or industrial effluent thereby making others uh, traditional systems of uh, separation uh, almost inefficient uh, for removing the VOCs so that you have to rely upon some sort of membrane uh, based separation process whether it is a PV or MD another example is 
air gap membrane distillation for milk concentration. So, here uh, membrane distillation is applied for uh, concentrating uh, food products, uh, milk was considered as the feed here. Membrane technology with reverse osmosis and membrane distillation is one uh, was used in cascade system type of thing. You see first where uh, RO section thereby followed by a uh, membrane distillation systems. So, in what is happening the RO is enriching as much as it can then finally, membrane separation is doing the final enrichment. So, in MD a porous hydrophobic membrane separates the feed and permeate phases and allows only water vapor to diffuse to the membrane. So, uh, uh, concentration of milk starts with RO. So, um, uh, so RO is concentrating it to almost 18 percent uh, solids. So, RO is followed by a membrane distillation to concentrate the milk to final uh, almost uh, near 50 percent of the solids. So, the, uh, the used air gap membrane distillation has the advantage of internal heat recovery and is therefore, often preferred about direct contact membrane distillation. So, AGMD is a better in case of uh, this uh, um, enrichment of uh, uh, milk products. Uh, so, reverse osmosis is favorable until its maximum achievable concentration. Air gap membrane distillation is despite low operational uh, temperatures allergy literacy for concentration of milk. So, reducing circulation rate gives a major reduction in uh, operational costs. This is a classic example of use of membrane distillation in uh, dairy industries. So, in another application is bilge water separation by membrane distillation. You know uh, sieve is a closed system. So, when waste water are generated from different sources in sieve whether it is washing, whether it is coming from leakages of holes or from condensation of water vapor everything is getting collected in the lowest part of a hole which is called the sieve bilge. Now, this bilge water contains all pollutants generated on the uh, ship including significant amount of oily pollutants generated mainly from the engine room, uh, oils and greases and all these things. So, moreover a composition of bilge water differs significantly for each ship, but as a rule you can say that uh, besides a mixture of fresh and sea water the oily bilge water also contains diesel fuels, oily fluids, grease, some suspended solids, heavy metals and some surfactants. Now, a volume of bilge water uh, increases uh, during the ship exploitation therefore, it must be discharged into the sea. Now, when you are talking about discharging this bilge wet water into the sea you need to take care of the discharge uh, recommendations. So, in accordance with the Marpole 73 by 78 convention which recommends how do you actually basically uh, discharge uh, the bilge water into sea, the oil concentration in the discharge water must be less than uh, 15 milligrams per liter or 15 ppm. So, uh, this is an uh, MD experimental setup for treatment of the bilge uh, water or bilge waste water. So, the first one you see this is a hollow fiber type of capillary type of system here with the membrane distillation module uh, system. Second is this is the distillation uh, tank, distillate tank. Third is a uh, cooler this is a cooler and the fourth is a feed tank ok here it is feed uh, fifth is thermostat ok. So, this is a thermostat six is heat exchanger um, seven is peristaltic pump and eight is thermometer and p manometer. Now, uh, a direct contact membrane distillation system was used in this case a capillary polypropylene acural pp v8 by 2 hollow fiber membranes were used for this uh, uh, treatment of the uh, bilge uh, water or waste water. A peristaltic pump continuously supplied the feed through a heat exchanger and MD module on the lumen side before returning uh, to the feed tank. Now, uh, the hydraulic pressure at the uh, module inlets was below 1 kilo Pascal. So, the cooled distillate was recirculated on the external membrane surface with a similar volume flow. The distillate temperature was maintained at 293 plus minus 1 Kelvin. Uh, the feed temperature was 323 uh, Kelvin or 343 Kelvin during bilge water uh, treatment experiments or in the uh, range of uh, 323 to 353 Kelvin during the MD studies with standard sodium chloride solution. Now, during the last series of MD experiments uh, the continuous feed concentration was carried out to achieve more than 80 percent of the water recovery. 
So, apart from this you know there are other applications of membrane distillation where also reported you can read more from literature. There are fantastic review papers available on membrane distillation. So, when uh, you can download those and you can go through. So, uh, concentration of solutions, membrane distillation can be used for concentration of solutions some in some cases just like uh, wastewater treatment concentration of salts, acids etcetera where we remove salts and acids or recover them. And the removal of volatile bioproducts, the volatile bioproducts such as ethanol, butanol, acetone, and aroma compounds. So, these are produced during fermentation. Usually, if you talk about uh, this, this is this produced by ABE fermentation. Okay. So, uh, this needs this needs to be removed okay, when the fermentation is going on because beyond certain uh, concentration of ethanol, butanol, or acetone, or any of these solvents, okay, the microorganisms will become dormant, so they will not become active to carry out the fermentation. So this needs to be removed by using membrane distillation. So you can see that uh, the simplest type of construction of the two compartments are separated by a unit. So that is a simple type of membrane distillation. You can just imagine that uh, there is a membrane in between, and there is a upstream side space. There is a downstream side space. A simple module. So evaporation occurs on the high temperature side, okay, the feed side, and uh, the temperature of this liquid will decrease. Then in contrast, condensation occurs the lower temperature side, and the temperature will increase. Uh, please refer to this figure you see feed uh, is at 90 degree centigrade okay when it uh, uh, leaves the module it becomes 50 degrees so almost 40 degree centigrade temperature is being lost now this in the form of evaporation you can see the permeate is entered as 45 degree centigrade and the same 40 uh, degree has been added to here so you get 85 degree centigrade as the permeate so in commercial installation the process will be carried out in counter current flow which allows a constant temperature difference to be set up across the membrane. The temperature of the feed solution decreases, but the temperature of the permeate increases. A substantial portion of the heat is transferred from the feed side to the permeate side and part of this energy can be recovered. So, uh, uh, with this uh, I conclude today's lecture. So, you can refer uh, um, uh, books um, all of this nowhere uh, membrane distillation is given in, in detail. So, there are two beautiful uh, this one uh, review papers which I have uh, given the references also in the slides you can see those. Please refer those uh, to read for membrane distillation and this much whatever I have discussed today is enough for a basic understanding. So, with this I conclude. So, thank you very much. Uh, in case you have any doubt please feel free to write to me at kmahanth at iitg.ac.in. Uh, in the next lecture that is the last module. So, we will have three lectures under this module. So, 34, 35, 36. So, in the next uh, uh, this module will be facilitated to transport mechanism, membrane contactors and other membrane processes. So, in the first lecture of this module that is lecture 34 under module 12, we will discuss the mechanism of couple transport, carrier agents, active transport, passive transport and their applications. So, thank you very much.